Hey everybody, Richie here from RW Hobbies. Welcome back to my latest installment of new kit releases as of November the 15th, 2022. Now, as you know, this is my monthly kind of feature on the channel. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and you get all notifications on not only these kind of videos, but also my other modeling content, such as build videos and bench updates. Now, bet please bear with me. I've had a, I'm on a bad run right now. I've picked up um, two weeks of cough and now a cold. Um, so hopefully we can get through in the next 15 minutes or so. So talking of which, as I mentioned before, there's tons of stuff gets released. I'm just going to focus on 20, 20 subjects, which caught my attention, 20 slides we're going to look at, and it's going to last about 15 minutes. Also, it's going to mostly be a aviation based just because my channel is pretty much military aircraft modeling, right? So most of it's going to be that kind of, cause that's my interest. So most of it's going to be aircraft, although I will put in some, you know, sci-fi or armor and some other subjects in there as well. Now, talking of which, we're going to start with the little armor section here. And first up is Meng's 35th scale Mastiff 2 British protected patrol vehicle. Cool subjects. It's always nice to see British subjects. And it does have a full interior. I included one picture here, but if you go over over to uh, Meng's Facebook page, you'll be able to see a lot more images and um, cool pictures of this um, vehicle right, right here. Next up, 16th scale. Excuse me, Andy Holly Hobby Headquarters, um, Tiger One Early. And um, as you know, he brought the Sherman, what, maybe two or three months ago? I think the first run's pretty much sold out now. And now the 16th scale, Tiger One, the Whitman's Command Tiger. Now, this isn't about the price at all. It's got some interior, not a full interior, but just have a little bit of interior detail. And I think it's got retailing for around about 150 US dollars. Now, point here is same as the Sherman, he doesn't have his own molding, he's not producing his own kits. They are Tacom kits. So Tacom kits, and he just white labels them and puts his name on them. So although it says Andy Hobby, Hobby Care Callers, these 16th scale kits are Tacom. So basically you had a 16th scale Tacom Sherman, and now you get a 16th scale Tacom Tiger one, which is being distributed through his channels, I guess. All right, next up, a really cool subject, a Vietnam gun truck. Now, I believe AFE Club released one probably about two or three years ago now, and I think that was King Cobra. So now we've got Eve of Destruction. It's just a cool-looking piece of kit. I definitely think I'll be picking up one myself to build. I had the King Cobra. I know now and again I floated with buying it, um, but never got around to it. But I think I might pick this one up for sure. Just a cool, again, cool subject. Really kind of beat this thing up and weather it and make a cool little dio as well, probably. All right, now onto the aircraft. So you don't get much more impressive than this. If you're feeling a little bit frisky and you want to build something big, here you go. A, build, a B2 Spirit in 48th scale by Tyson Models. Yep, 48th scale. Now, as I put there, it's a 43-inch wingspan. And just look at that back form piece next to the pitch on the left. If you look there, that's a refrigerator, a side-by-side -side American refrigerator, um, well, fridge freezer, I guess. And you can see it's pretty much the size of a fridge door. <laughs> Things massive. So you got your vac form, um, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, so you got your vac form, basic shell of the fuselage, and all the detail bits, as you can see on the picture on the right, are all 3D printed. And there's a lot of wheels there too. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, six, sixteen. It's twenty wheels, right? Wow. I never you had that many wheels. So a lot of wheels to paint there. Um, there are some details you can see, but it's not going to be obviously crazy, right? It's um, but you, if you've got plenty of space, like a barn, and you want to hang something up, then maybe this is for you. A massive 48 scale B2. So that caught my. It is is out for available right now. You can buy it if you search around the internet. is is available to buy, and I'm not sure on the price, but I'm sure it would be super cheap. All right, mini base. Follows my channel will know I'm not a huge mini base fan. Um, yes, you 33. Uh, I didn't love it, to be to be honest. I thought it was over-engineered. didn't fit very well in parts. They've now brought out an F-16. So they moved from the Russian now to some US-based um, aircraft. And now I Block 20, which I believe there is a, it, which I believe is the Taiwan version, um, Taiwanese version. So if I'm wrong, please correct me, but I'm pretty sure Block 20 here, which they're releasing, is going to be um, the Taiwan. And, um, yeah, it's going to be great detail, but I'm sure it'll be a million different pieces. And, um, yeah, fit the little pieces and take you forever to put together. <laughs> But if you want a detailed F-16, there you go. I think Kinetic also brought out recently, they retooled their F-16s as well in 48 scale. All right, another one caught my eye, talking about massive um, B-2s. Now we're in the 18th scale. That's right, guys, 18th scale. Jet Mads Skyhawk. 26.6 inches long. Now, 
that's not that bad. When I when I saw 18th scale Skyhawk, I was thinking maybe three or four three or four foot long, but um, yeah, it's obviously a small aircraft, right? So if you want something very impressive, a resin kit with 3D printed parts, head over to Jetmads. Now, just bear in mind, they only produce about 500 of every kit. So make sure you get in there early, get your pre-orders in, because if you wait, you know, six months a year, it's going to be highly unlikely you'll be able to find this again. But if Skyhawk's your aircraft and you like bigger stuff, again, 18th scale, so things going to be massive. All right, Hobby Boss, A10C, 48th scale. I believe this is released, and I think they brought the A out um, and announced the C. I think this is readily available since, um, the, yeah, now since the past month, um, my last update. I just put there the screenshots of the color callouts. You can see there's four very nice looking markings there. And it's pretty much based upon their um, A variant. So actually I know it is released and definitely in the UK for sure, if not other places. And there are reviews online as well, I think of this. Reasonably priced. If you like A10, strap yourself in because there's tons of different versions coming out, um, different manufacturers coming out next um, upcoming year. All right, so Hobby Boss 72nd scale Dragon Lady U2C. Wingspan about 34 centimeters. Obviously, this is a very gangly looking aircraft. If you're looking for a semi second scale Dragon Lady, here you go. Um, it should be out pretty soon, if not out already by the time this video gets released. All right, moving along. I saw this as a new release, but I feel like this has been out already. So this may not be a new release. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe just a reboxing or a different markings. But this is a Super Etendard um, by Kinetic in 48 scale. Uh, moving along. Helicopters. Wow, man, helicopters. A lot of interesting helicopters you see next three slides. So, Tacom's Apache D&E, um, we've talked about for, what, three months now? Uh, we Every month we've got more and more pictures and more and more details. This was released shortly after my last update, so a um, lot of you guys have probably seen this already on their Facebook page. But um, just the detail involved here, beautiful. To see the avionics bays, the engine there, and the rotor blades. There's tons of different photographs, but these a couple I picked out. And um, really good, nice detail. And um, I know people are very excited. This might be the kit release of the year for 2023. I know a lot of people are excited. The 35th scale, so it's going to be big. And it's going to be you know match up with your armor and your figures for dioramas. It's going to be an awesome kit. But stay tuned for two more slides, because you might be shocked um, what you're going to see in about 30 seconds time. Next up is um, Tacom's MI-20N. So they just announced the Apache, what, two months ago? Now they announced the Russian version, basically the Russian Apache somewhat, the MI-20N Night Hunter. Now that's the only image we have, just this one shot right here from Tacom. Um, as you know, they're pretty good at releasing images. So by the time we come around to next month, I'm sure we have plenty more shots of what it looks like and um, some of the details and stuff. But I'm sure it's gonna be no different to the Apache we just saw. It's gonna be the same level of detail. And Tacom, you know, they went quiet for a few years, but now they're really coming back on all fronts. They're doing what boats, they're doing helicopters, they're doing armor, all kinds of interesting subjects and interesting scales. Um, so yeah, they're really churning it out right now. So yeah, Tacom 35th scale MI-20, and if you want the Russian kind of version to go with your Apache. So before I move to the next slide, there's that old saying where you wait for a bus, nothing shows up, and then two show up at once. So Three, four months ago, we didn't really have much in the way of Apache, especially in 35th scale. And we're like, hmm. We saw Attack on one and we got really excited. But guess what? Meng. Meng are bringing out one also. Now, I didn't think the Attack on one could be um, leveled in terms of detail and stuff. I thought that wouldn't be surpassed. So this one, Meng, looks just as good, if not nicer. So take your pick. So two shots right now. There's, again, go to Meng's Facebook page. You'll see plenty more shots if you want more details. Again, I'm not sure on the pricing and stuff yet, but it's going to be beautiful. Look at that on picture at the bottom left. It, and um, the detail is there. It's Meng, so it's going to fall together. Takam's really good quality too. Now this one, the only difference is this is a D, whereas the Takam kit, you can do an E or a D. If that makes a difference to you but it's um it looks beautiful um and it's gonna be really interesting once these guys release which one's gonna be kind of the winner of this group um like again like i said we've gone years without not any and then now suddenly we get two from different manufacturers so yeah really interesting so who had known so now we have meng um the apache as well all right 30 second scale tallery tornado ids on the left there, you can see the four markings. Not super excited with this one. Now, there's been three versions. I've got the first one, the GR4, the British one, um, up here in my stash. Not excited because of the price point. You're not going to get much change for 200 US dollars. And the tallery is just very expensive. I don't see why the, the price has really come up the last few years. 
two or three years in particular, and they're surpassing like Tamiya and all, or some of the AAA kind of companies out there. It, don't get me wrong, I've not built mine, but it looks great. The power line's a little bit overdone. Um, it goes together well, supposedly. Again, I've not built mine, but my just hang up with this is with 30 second scale tornadoes is the Rebel kit isn't that bad. It's got beautiful detail. I'm actually building mine right now, and it's a third of the cost, if not quarter of the cost. So you can buy three or four Rebel kits, the price of the Tannery one. Now, I get it. Yeah, engine, engines on this, all the rest of it. But if you just want the static model, um, again, uh, if you build the Rebel out of the box, it goes together really well. Um, well, it goes, yeah, basic modeling skills and filling, you know, sounding, that kind of stuff. I've got, look at mine across the table here, and, and no major issues at all. The problem the Revell comes in when you try to add aftermarket, once you add, like, resin cockpit sets, resin intakes, resin speed brakes, all that kind of stuff, they don't really fit that well, and it causes all kinds of issues. But if you just stick out the box, you can buy the Revell, 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 depends where you're on the world. Um, you can buy that kit for Revell Germany for about 60, 65 US dollars compared to 200 for this one. Now, again, you get the engine, you get some nice details on this one, the flaps and slats, that kind of stuff. But that's a lot of money. You know, we're heading towards a recession. $200 for a kit is a lot of money. And um, we have another Tallery kit coming up at the very end. Again, that $200 price point is just a very highly priced. So for me, it's, this is going to be a no. I love a Tornado, but I have the GR4 in my stash, and the um, I just don't really have a um, desire to spend that much money on the German version right here. All right, moving back down to 48 scale. Hobby 2000, the Harrier, RAF Harrier, GR7 and 9. Now, this is a Hasegawa Rebox, and it's very cheap as well. It's cheaper than Hasegawa kit, and being Hobby 2000, um, you get a, a canopy mask set, and you get some really nice markings, and I believe you get the 65 and 100% Larix, so you can do different versions. Both of those are in the box. So again, if you check out YouTube, I'm sure you find plenty of reviews. This is out, this is released, you can buy it now, especially in the UK. I'm not sure about the rest of the world. Um, Hobby 2000 is a Hasegawa kit, but you got a few little extras thrown in there. All right, keeping on with the old Harrier theme, we've got the Kinetic. Um, these have been out probably three or four years now, but you got the GR3 and the FRS1. Um, but these are the Falklands 40th anniversary sets. And... What makes them the anniversary sets, is, which is kind of a nice touch, you get the Royal Navy tow tractor included in 48 scale. So you get the tra tow tractor and you get the aircraft. I don't think you get the figures. I might be wrong, um, but you definitely get the tractor. And there's two variants. Obviously, you've got the GR3, um, the RF one or the FRS Sea Harrier, um, the naval version down there too. And um, I believe these are great kits that go together really well. But my only thing here is the boxes. The, the GR3 is a kinetic gold branding. Whereas the FRS one just has regular branding, but they're both anniversary kits with a tow tractor. So I'm not sure what, what's going on with the branding and the marketing there. I believe the kits are essentially the same quality, same types of kit. So I'm not sure why one gold and one is not. Um, again, if you know, please put a comment in the um, show notes below. All right. If you like civil aviation, semi second scale. Again, 72 scale. So most civil aviation is 144 or 200. This is 70 seconds. So it's going to be big. It's going to be, you know, a couple of foot long. Mac 2, Boeing 727-200, eight liveries. So I've got the British Airways one, I've got Lufthansa, and I've got the US Air Force. There's a handful of others too. And you're only getting one livery per pack. So basically you're going to buy a kit depending on which airline you want. So if you want British Airways, you're going to buy the airline, the British Airways kit. If you want the Lufthansa one, you're going to buy that one, so on. Now, these are available on Hanants in the UK. Um, they do ship worldwide. Mac 2, you know, it's a garage kit. It's going to be a handful to put together. It's going to take some work. It's going to be maybe a little bit agricultural. So just heads up on that one. But semi-second scale, if you like your 727, um, you know, it might be a good kit for you. All right. Hasegawa, semi-second scale, F-35A Lightning in the 65th Aggressor Squadron. Two reasons I include this. Firstly, it's a new release in semi-second scale. So if you're looking for a Lightning, the Hasegawa F-35s are really nice kits. This is a good one to get. And the second one is... You might, may or may not know, I think most of us know, that Tamiya is bringing out a 48 scale Lightning in, well, by the time this video gets released, maybe in like a week or two, very soon, um, end of November, start of December time. Amazing looking kit. A lot of people are turned off, as I put a note there, the F-35 is boring. A lot of people don't like the gray, um, the plain gray markings. They, they like, you know, like the look of the, t the engineering of the kit and that kind of stuff, but turned off by the markings, the plainness. So this might be a good option for you. Just to look at this. Um, there is an aggressive version out there. I'm sure the aftermarket guys will release um, some decal sets for it. So if you're on the fence about getting the Tamiya kit, then maybe about the color schemes. 
well, hey, there's an option for you. Maybe you want to do it in, like pretty cool, like splinter aggressive markings. All right, moving some cars. Alpha Models 24 scale Mitsubishi Evolution Wagon. Um, all resin kit. Alpha Models are not cheap by any means. This is probably won't get much change from, you know, 200, 250 US dollars. Um, and um, yeah, but they're very interesting subjects. Like if you're a car guy, where are you going to find a 24 scale kit of a Mitsubishi Wagon? I don't think you are. So they did a lot of Ferraris, Porsches, all kinds of interesting, unusual cars. Um, and if you haven't heard of them already, as you see on the left there, all resin. Some have engine detail, some don't. But unfortunately, they're all at the same, same price range, which is kind of strange. You think if you have engine detail, you should be you know a little bit more expensive. Or or should I say the other way around? If it doesn't have engine detail, it should be a little bit more cheaper, right? Um, note on this one is, look around. And these are Chinese made. Go, look, go straight to the source. Go to AliExpress um, and look at the prices there. I've looked at AliExpress. And you can get these for about 25, 30, 35 percent cheaper than someone like Hero Boy in the UK. Now, even the UK, obviously, you're going to pay customs charges and tax and that kind of stuff. If you're someone like like me in the US, you, there is no import taxes, so you're going to get you know you you get it straight for what you pay um, in AliExpress. So, if you want, if you're into Alpha models, not necessarily the Mitsubishi, but any Alpha model, go check out check out um, AliExpress, and you might see some savings there for you. Um, and one thing I noticed about AliExpress too is the Mobile app is really weird, like in terms of searching and glitching, especially when you put scales in with like dashes and stuff. If you go to the go to a desktop browser and put in like 124 alpha models, it's going to search and pull up much better results for you, and you can get all kinds of stuff show up. And again, you're going to look at um, some very good cost savings compared to buying them, in, you know, in, in Europe or the US. Next up, this is what I alluded to earlier, a Tallery again, 12 scale Bugatti Type 35B. Just a classic, awesome looking car there in the blue. I know they have a few other in this kind of lineup. They have a, um, I think a Theat or a Maserati as well, possibly um, in 12 scale. These kits are newly tall to go together really well. Um, those are ones are red. This one obviously is blue, which looks a little bit different. Um, I would definitely be interested in this car until I saw the price. Again, like the Tornado aircraft, this is almost 200 US dollars. I'm not going to buy, I can't, that kind of money on, on, on 12 scale car kit from a tallery. Um, so unfortunately, you know, if it's priced around 100, 120 mark, maybe, but 200 is way too much for me. Um, again, the kits are just, all tallery kits are just really highly priced and I don't think necessarily quality matches the price point. So up to you. Um, again, if you're into those kind of classic cars and you got the money to spend, this is a really cool subject for sure. And finally, to wrap it up this month, sci-fi. Who doesn't like Baby Yoda or Grogu? Um, Ravel announced a one to three scale. Yep, one to three, kind of unusual scale of Baby Yoda. And that equates to about 24 centimeters long, which is um, what, like seven or eight inches, I guess. Um, yeah, not really much to say. I'm not sure what he called it. Is it the crib or whatever it is? He's, he's like a little capsule here with Baby Yoda in, you're getting a stand, and that is it. So if you're a Star Wars fan, you like Baby Yoda, and you want a 24 centimeter long version of him, this might be the one for you. So there we go, down and dirty, got through his 20 slides pretty efficiently, hopefully. Um, thank you for watching and staying tuned. Please, again, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button, and you get my update next month, all the latest new releases, and also you get all my other content too. I'm releasing you know, a couple of videos a week at least. Thank you, have a great weekend, great holidays, all the rest of that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.